but I want to start real quick with um, the, the rule. We have a date for it now. They are going to publish this rule on January 31st, 2023. That gives you 120 days from that date to comply with the regulation or face potential felony charges. Um, and, and so I think that's, that's an important thing to know. This, we've been talking about this rule for a while because they had publicly announced the final version of it back on, uh, I think it was January 13th. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, they hadn't actually published the rule, and that's an important step in all this, right? Yeah. So, so why do you think that there was this gap? Um, because typically, you know, you'd hold a press conference maybe the day or two before. Maybe if it's going to be published mm-hmm. on on Monday, you have the press conference on Friday. But as you say, this has been uh, like over two weeks now. So, what do you think? What do you think was responsible for the delay? That's actually a really good question. I think uh, you know I. I will say that I, I think that they published or they announced it, didn't publish it, but they announced the rule and put out the text of it that day because it was right before SHOT Show, which is the industry's trade show for anybody who doesn't know. So it, the ATF goes to SHOT Show every year to interact with the industry that it regulates. And so I think they wanted to get the text out there. Uh, maybe they always plan to publish it uh, on the 31st, but they wanted to get the text out so people could read it and go to them with questions during SHOT Show, which uh, we can get into some of that stuff uh, here because I, I did attend the Q&A that the ATF director put on, and uh, we have some quotes from him that I can read out. But um, that's my best guess as to why there's a, this like two-week gap or really like three, almost three weeks gap, right, um, between the uh, announcement of the rule and the actual you know, technical publishing of it. Because that's significant, right? Because uh, the the rule doesn't start to go into effect. There's that ticking clock of 120 days where you get this amnesty period to comply. Um, that doesn't go into effect until it's actually published. And it's I think it's also significant for some of the lawsuits as well, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, certainly, you know, one of the things that we've seen post-Bruin is um, a lot of states are kind of crafting their laws, A, to make it really difficult to find standing, Right. Um, You have to show that not just could you plausibly be harmed by this, but that you are actually suffering harm. And so uh, like the the first lawsuit in New York filed after Bruin got rejected because the judge said, well, the law hasn't gone into effect yet. So you guys don't have standing. Um, And then that was, you know, refiled as uh, Anton Yook. Um, Ultimately, Judge Sotheby said, hey, not only do you have standing, but yeah, these laws are you're likely to win. Um, And granted that uh, temporary injunction before the Second Circuit overturned him. So in terms of the timing, this really is important, right? Because now the clock, as you say, is ticking. And so now not just gun owners uh, who might be plaintiffs, but FFLs who might be plaintiffs can say, okay, listen, I am going to be suffering harm because particularly if you're an FFL right now, what do you do with the braces that you have in stock that you that you purchased, you know, for retail sale? Because the ATF said these are fine. And now the ATF says, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, what do you do here? So, you know, you've basically got a very limited window for the courts to step in or you will be irreparably harmed. You'll at least be out the cost of those braces, if nothing else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. And did you have a theory as to why there there's this sort of extended delay before when they announced it and when they're going to publish it? No, I don't have a, a, a working theory on it. I just I find it interesting. But mm. I also find, uh, you know, your latest story at the Reload about Again, the continued clarifications of a rule that has not yet officially been published, I find that to be really interesting, too. And and I yeah. wonder, there's a part of me that kind of wonders if you don't, if they're not just kind of floating this stuff out there, waiting for the feedback, and then trying to, uh, if, if need be, formally tweak you know, the language of the rule, or simply say, oh, no, 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 this is how we are interpreting this language. So no, no need to worry, gun owners. Yeah, that could be right. I mean, that, you know, that goes back to the idea of of making the text available before SHOT Show so that they could actually inter- have their officials interact with industry members to see what they what they said. I mean, obviously, you know, this is the rulemaking process. They went through a whole comment period, so they should right. have presumably a really good idea of, of the objections to this rule or the problems with it, but um, perhaps they're, they wanted to be sort of extra cautious. I don't know if they can even change it at this point because, uh, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole like rulemaking process that you have to go through to tweak these things. Right. And that's why I, to me, it makes sense that they're, 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 they're looking for what that pushback is. And obviously, yeah, you're right. They had 200 and something thousand comments 
mm-hmm. in opposition to uh, the brace yeah. rule, right? So, so they know what what a lot of this opposition is. But you know, again, the the language is so vague and arbitrary and ambiguous at times that I, I think even even though it's two hundred ninety three pages long, th- there are a lot of folks who legitimately are struggling to figure out what the ATF means. When they, you know, with these rules and what they mean when they t- uh, you know, talk about, uh, you know, in your case, the story that you just wrote about, um, you know, pistols that are imported versus domestically produced. 